Let's talk about these things called parts in wind chill. First off, let's talk about what they are not. They are not CAD parts. And this is probably one of the biggest sources of confusion for people, especially those coming over from Creo Parametric. In Creo, you have a .prt file, which consists of a bunch of features. It has a symbol that looks like a blue box. That is a CAD part, a part in Creo Parametric. It is not a part in windchill. A part in windchill is represented by a gray gear. And in windchill, they're referred to as parts. I prefer to call them WT parts. I believe the WT is for windchill technology or windchill type. Some other people call them enterprise parts. Also, I've been known to call them gray gears as well because that's the symbol that is used to represent them. So again, don't mistake a .prt file from Creo Parametric as a part in windchill. And that's probably one of the biggest sources of confusion regarding these. So let's talk about what a WT part is. A WT part or a windchill part is sort of like a placeholder for a physical object that you can use in the product structures that you manage as part of product lifecycle management in Windchill. And so you can create them from CAD documents like .prt files or .asm files or without CAD documents. The dialog box on the left-hand side of the screen here shows the form that you fill out for creating a windchill part on its own. So it can be associated with a CAD file, and that CAD file can either be a CAD part or a CAD assembly, or it could be without any content associated with it. But you could also have it associated with CAD files later on after you create one. So they're pretty flexible in that regard. And so there are a number of different uses for these wind chill parts in wind chill. And a big one, and we'll go through these one by one. You can use them for managing your bills of material. You can also use them in change management. They're also used in supplier management, configuration management and just a ton of different uses for them. So let's start going through some of these. But first off, let's mention this thing called an end item. An end item is a special kind of wind chill part. And it's simple, it's going to be a gray gear with a blue diamond on it. And we use end items just to distinguish things that we deliver as a final product or we manage as individual units that we are selling to other people or using as an individual unit uh, for consumption. And an end item can contain other end items, sort of like how a CAD assembly can contain other CAD assemblies. But it's just something that we use to distinguish certain WT parts from another. And they do have some special uses as well. So the first use for these windchill parts, managing bills of material. And you can use them for creating brand new structures in windchill. Your structures do not have to come from your CAD application like Creo Parametric. So for example, in the image on the right, here we have a WT part structure that we've built up including some CAD geometry and some objects that don't have associated CAD models. And so you can also use them for something called EBOM, MBOM transformation. One thing about bills of material, you're actually gonna have many different ones involved in your design to manufacturing to inspection process. So for example, what you get from your design team, that is the EBOM or the engineering bill of materials. Often that needs to be rearranged for the people who are doing the manufacturing, the assembly and the integration, because the way that you design something isn't necessarily the way that you are going to put it together. So we can use these wind chill parts in a product structure and rearrange them from the engineering bill of materials to a manufacturing bill of materials. They are also used to represent objects that you aren't going to model in CAD. So for example, in the image on the right, I have the packaging that we're using to deliver a phone, and it's going to contain things like a warranty card. 
I'm not going to model the warranty card in Creo Parametric. Also, we have the shipping. You might have instruction manuals. You might have additional components like a charger for the phone. And so you can take all those different objects and put them together in a new product structure, including things that you aren't physically going to model. When I was working in drones, unmanned aerial vehicles, a big use for us was setting up spare parts kits and also setting up mission kits. So we would have the drone, but we'd also have some other equipment that we would need for di different missions or tests that we're performing. For example, we might have some transceivers, we might have some additional instrumentation boxes, we would also have uh, the spare parts kit included in the mission kit. So having these wind chill parts allow us to create all sorts of other different useful product structures. Also, we can use them for managing alternates and substitutes in our product structures. And the difference between alternates and substitutes, think of the first letter of the word. So alternates can be used anywhere. You can exchange the part in any product structure that it appears. But a substitute starts with S. Think specific. With a substitute, you're only allowing a component to be replaced in one specific assembly or product structure. And when you're doing these replacements, these alternates and substitutes, they can be one way or two way. So for example, I might be able to exchange component B for component A and A for B wherever they are used, or maybe I'm only allowed to exchange component B for component A. Another use, change management. There's something called effectivity and effectivity is managing essentially when a change takes effect when are we going to replace an old version with a new version of an object and there are a number of different ways in which you can manage effectivity you can do effectivity by date so for for example on january 1st 2021 we are switching over from version c to version d or you could do it by lot or you could do it by individual serial numbers. How you control the eff effectivity is up to you. And this effectivity applies not just to WT parts that might have associated CAD or not have associated CAD, but you can also use effectivity as part of document management. So for example, if you are switching over some different components that you're using, maybe you're going to switch over the documents that describe how you are going to install those different components or use those different products. And another thing that's related to effectivity, you could use these WT parts for managing something called supersession. And with supersession, rather than controlling, hey, we're going from one version of an object to another version of an object, when you have a big enough change in form, fit, or function, you're supposed to change the actual part number. And so when you're changing part numbers, you can man manage when those part number changes take effect with supersession, when one object supersedes another object. Next method that we can use, or excuse me, next use for WT parts with change management is in the disposition. In other words, when you are putting a change into place, when you have a change task in a change notice, you can specify what you're supposed to do with the real world components that might already be in the pipeline. And so when you're defining a disposition, for real world components, you can specify different choices for components that are on order or a work in process or that have already been finished. And you have a variety of different choices for the disposition of how you want to deal with these real world components when a change is being implemented. And some of those different choices include use existing, return, rework, scrap, convert, service, retrofit, and some of those terms have definitions that are very similar to each other. So you're going to want to define within your organization what those different terms mean. And there's even choices like not applicable in there. All right, let's talk about supplier management. And one of the big mistakes that I see with CAD data management is that a lot of organizations track too much information related to the supply chain 
within the CAD models themselves. So for example, within a CAD model, they might have a parameter for whether something is bought or made. Nah, that's not too bad. But a lot of times within the CAD model, they will also have parameters for the name of the manufacturer, the name of the vendor, the manufacturer part number, the vendor part number, all sorts of information that really aren't suitable for being managed within CAD. And one of the problems with managing those with parameters inside of a CAD model is that they can only have a single value. Whereas a lot of times you have components that you could source from a number of different suppliers. Think about fasteners or think about connectors. You can get them from many different places. And so that's why we have a module inside of Windchill called supplier management or people call it SUMA for short. And with supplier management, that allows you to define manufacturing parts and vendor parts related to the windchill parts that might be connected to a CAD document. So for example, let's say that you are getting a standard connector like a DB9 or DE25 or a D38999 connector. Well, you might use that military part number or the standard part number as the name of the CAD model and also the name of the corresponding windchill part. But then you could get that connector from a variety of different vendors and a variety of different manufacturers. So for example, for your manufacturers, maybe that same part could be made by Amphenol, it could be made by TE, it could be made by Molex, you know, lots of different manufacturers of connectors out there. But then who are you going to buy it from? Are you going to buy it from DigiKey, or maybe one of those manufacturers is also going to be a vendor. And so that's what the supplier management tool allows you to do. It allows you to come up with things called AML and AVL, the approved manufacturer list and the approved vendor list. And when you're setting up supplier management with these different kinds of WT parts, you're also going to specify a sourcing status. So the sourcing status could be approved, preferred, do not use, or even single source for certain components. And one thing to note, if you take a look over on the image in the upper right, earlier I mentioned that I often refer to WT parts as gray gears. Well, the windchill parts for manufacturer parts and vendor parts by default actually have different colors. The manufacturer parts are gold and the vendor parts are white. So there's a little bit of distinction there. Another big use for windchill parts is configuration management. Configuration management in windchill allows you to capture all the different parts and components and objects that went into the construction of an actual object. So it allows you to create a digital twin of real world instances from a product line. So this is typically used for something that is not mass produced. You typically wouldn't do this for objects that are going to be manufactured in the thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, because that's way too much information inside of Windchill and probably would be better managed in an enterprise resource planning system. Where this is better inside, or well not, it's not better in, than ERP inside of Windchill, but where it can be used inside of Windchill is when you are building objects that aren't going to have many of them built. So for example, if you were setting up for say a jet airplane, yeah, you're not building those in the thousands. You're probably building those in the dozens or maybe hundreds. Hey, you can manage the configuration of each serialized instance that comes off of the factory line inside of Windchill. And so with these serialized structures, you can create what are called part configurations. So for example, we have this particular configuration, which has this version of this part being incorporated in it. And when you have these different part configurations, you set up the diff different part instances, which are the serialized instances of a particular part configuration that you have defined. And there's a lot of things that you can do with configuration management in Windchill. So for example, you could use them for variances. And variances are when you have 
a defined configuration and then you decide that you are going to not follow that definition exactly and so to give you an example of my experience when i was using this for managing the design of drones we would have a particular engineering definition of a drone and it might come up that hey we're going to build this but we're going to build it without this particular sensor because this sensor is on back order we're not able to install it at this time and so when you make a choice like that before the start of the build that's typically a deviation now, sometimes when we're building something, we're like, oh, wait, we're going to substitute this one component for another component, or we're just, for whatever reason, we are not going to put this particular component in here at this time. When you make that decision after the start of the build process, that's typically a waiver. And both of these fall under the group of variances, but the general rule of thumb is that when you make the decision before the start of the build, it's a deviation. When you make the decision to make a change after the start of the build, then you're going to use a waiver. And that's just how you're saying that this particular serialized instance is going to be different from the engineering definition in this particular way. And those different variances, the deviations and waivers, can actually lead to change requests that lead to change notices that you use to implement in the engineering definition itself. So again, there's a lot of power that you have with this functionality inside of Windchill. So there you have it, a number of different uses that you have for these gray gears or these Windchill parts with inside of PDM Link. If you have any questions about, hey, we're thinking about int uh, implementing Windchill, whether you're using PDM Link for product data management, MPM Link for manufacturing process planning, Project Link for collaborating with suppliers, Windchill Workgroup Manager for s setting up other CAD systems to Windchill, or using some of the ThingWorks IoT applications or the nice ThingWorks Navigate apps for a simpler interface to Windchill, drop me a line. I can provide you with more information or set you up with a demo. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.